A320. Flight crews and deicing personnel. Coming up. A320, Mentor Channel. Flight crews and de-icing personnel working together in temporary teamwork for safe skies. Introduction. Flying aircraft in winter conditions is not an abnormal condition, but it does require more attention to detail and some specific knowledge. It is normal to be relieved at the end of winter and to relax a little as the threat subsides but the memory of winter needs to be preserved for the next seasonal repeat. This winter threat also requires a high level of additional teamwork between flight crew and ground staff. For a fairly short period of time, flight crew and ground staff are focused on one objective, the safe takeoff of the aircraft, and must therefore work together towards a common aim. In this article, we will be speaking about this important interaction between flight crews and ground crews and how their complementary action can enhance safety. Pilots ultimately have responsibility for their aircraft, and in winter, they need more input from ground crews in order that their decision-making is fully informed. Importance of proper training. It is of prime importance that all ground to icing personnel of whatever grade or function are fully trained to recognize icing of all types and in all forms, even to recognize the conditions prevailing when ice or frost can form. Active icing conditions. A good pair of eyes is crucial in many ways to the safety of the aircraft. Ground staff can sometimes be the only way that flight crews in the cockpit can be informed of icing safety issues on their aircraft in unseen areas. All crews, flight and ground, need regular training for winter operations, and this needs to be constantly in the memory, not something which is put to the back of the mind in summer, and therefore comes as a shock next winter. Another aspect of the flight ground crew interaction is that flight crews are not always informed on AMM procedures, de-icing, etc., and ground crews are not generally informed on FCOM content. Some general cross-training for both crews serves to improve the flow of information between both. The worst statistics for dispatch reliability, loss of aircraft slots, and even cancellations tend to occur in the October-November period every year, when this transitional period into winter operations has not been properly prepared for. The best time to prepare for this is in August-September, using simulators if possible, but certainly practicing procedures and scenarios and refreshing the memories of what happened last winter. Typical de-icing procedure. There is no typical operation. All airports are different. The buildup of activity is organic, and activities occur differently in different locations. A de-icing procedure, which is inherently good for Bolivia, may not be the best for Siberia or Paris. This is why all authorities require each airline to write their own individual procedures for their own locations and to work with de-icing service providers to ensure the procedures they create are correct for their aircraft. Importance of proper teamwork. To illustrate the importance of good flight crew de-icing personnel teamwork, we have split a winter ground operation workflow into the following representative phases. Pre-boarding. Start of engines and taxi to dacing pad. Ground to icing. Taxi to runway. Pre-takeoff. And for each phase, we look at how their complementary action can enhance safety. Pre-boarding. After receiving the weather briefing, aircrew will inspect the exterior of the aircraft during their pre-flight inspection. At this time, the flight crew may request to icing or further anti-icing depending on the aircraft's condition and the weather. The aircraft may or may not have been treated prior to their arrival. It is more likely now that the aircraft is boarded first and then de-iced on the way to take off via the de-icing pad. Flight crew should also remember that the ground crew are outside in the weather and may have advice on the immediate conditions prevailing. The three different contamination checks required to be accomplished. 1. Pre-flight contamination check. Normally accomplished by the flight crew. However, in the absence of the flight crew, the controller, the ICE coordinator, can accomplish the check. 2. 
post de ice contamination check accomplished by the de ice inspector. Three, pre takeoff check accomplished periodically during taxi out and prior to takeoff by the flight crew. Various different terms can be used to describe the activities of people on the team. One person should be designated as the manager or responsibility holder for all de icing activities. He or she would normally be called the controller, de ice coordinator, and sometimes also ice man. One person must be designated as the inspector, normally called de ice inspector. This person is responsible for making sure and confirming that the aircraft critical surfaces, wings, stabilizers, and fin are free from frozen contamination. Contamination equals ice, frost, snow, etc. The final required method is by touching the aircraft wing skin, tactile test. This person can be anyone from the teams. Different airports have different personnel configurations. What is important is that one person is designated for this responsibility. Start of engines and taxi to de-icing pad. Understanding the significance of holdover times, hot, is important as these will directly affect the pre-flight phase planning. Prepare the aircraft for de-icing, close intakes and outflow valves. Set aircraft in ditch mode. Anti-icing is a less aggressive stage, which ensures the aircraft remains clear of contamination for the required time. Aircrew need to remind themselves that they are following procedures, FCOM, and are highly occupied with cockpit work and preparation. Any extra information and assistance they can get from ground crew should not be forgotten or dismissed. Ground de-icing. De-icing procedures are basically written and designed to remove contamination from the aircraft's critical surfaces. Fuselage cleaning and front fuselage cleaning needs to be performed carefully to ensure aerials are not damaged and windscreens and wipers are not clogged with fluid. Ground crews are local, often pilots are not. That means that although pilots will be given a weather briefing, Often the ground crew can give details for short local changes, which can be valuable to pilots. Here the air crew and the ground dacing crew come together. The flight crew taxi the aircraft into position on the de-icing pad and the de-icing vehicles drive up to the aircraft. If necessary, the aircraft is de-iced and anti-iced in accordance with the pilot's request and the prevailing weather conditions. The ground de-icing crew should consist of a controller, de-ice coordinator, the relevant number of vehicle drivers and de-icing lance operators, and a de-ice inspector. There must always be a ground dish inspector, qualified locally and to national and international standards, to confirm to the pilot that the de-icing has been effective and that the aircraft carries no contamination before moving off to the flight area. In most cases, the preferred method of confirmation is by tactile test, or basically, the de-ice inspector will touch the aircraft wing surface with bare fingers, figure one. This is probably still the only trusted method of confirming the wing is clear of contamination, particularly clear ice, figure two. Taxi to runway. When the aircraft is ready and declared free of ice, the flight crew will taxi towards the runway. Flight crew still need to be vigilant to watch the time and ensure hot is not overrun. Weather conditions do not change and the aircraft starts to collect contamination. If in doubt, turn back. Use as much of the ground resource as possible and keep checking that no contamination has formed or stuck. Aircrew must also be vitally aware that contamination can grow in areas they cannot see. For example, in extremely low temperatures and in precipitation, particularly snow, it is possible for the precipitation to hit the windscreen and melt. The windscreen externally is not necessarily at a very high temperature, but hot enough not to freeze. Thus, any clear melt water will run down the side of the aircraft underneath the windscreen and out of the pilot's vision. If the aircraft is required to return for red treatment and the time builds, this can build a fairly thick ice bridge, which may cause a problem with unreliable airspeed at a later time, because it will deflect the airflow away from the pitot tube, figure four, five, and six. If an aircraft is slow to take off for any reason and needs to be de-iced again or retreated for anti-icing, sometimes more than once, Aircrew must bear in mind the potential growth of these ice bridges and their potential to cause unreliable airspeed indications during takeoff. This is not to be confused with unreliable airspeed caused by ice crystals in crews. Pre-takeoff. For the previously described situations, it would be necessary for ground crew to approach the aircraft, 
for example to confirm icing on the front fuse. If that is the case, it is the responsibility of the flight crew to call them forward and ensure their safety. Conclusion 1. Know your de-ice and anti-ice procedures. 2. Be ready to adapt. There are good rules and procedures, but we cannot be rigid as the weather situation can alter quickly. All situations need to be treated with intelligent adaptation. 3. Maximize teamwork. Good teamwork between flight crews and ground crews is an essential ingredient of safe winter operations. Ground crew local knowledge may be invaluable. It should be sought and used by flight crews. Flight crew have the ultimate responsibility, but they need to make use of ground their crew capability until the latest possible moment. 4. Always maintain vigilance. It leads to improved safety levels. References A320 Family Flight Crew Operating Manual, FCOM Pro SUP Adverse Weather Cold Weather Flight Crew Training Manual, FCTM Normal Operations Supplementary Information Cold Weather Aircraft Maintenance Manual, AMM Chapters 1230 and 12310 complete. A320, Mentor Channel.